Yo, everybody, what's good? It's your man, Uncle Freezy. Welcome to Nick's Versus. You know what Nick's Versus is. Nick's Versus is, is the joint where our esteemed host goes in on some questions and narratives that are floating around in Nick's universe. And he don't just go in. He goes in. Welcome the host the star of Nick's versus Woodshed 1914. Brother, how you doing? I'm doing well, bro. Glad to be here, man. Get on some topics and, and keep it 100 and keep it a buck. You know how we do. Bro, I got, I got some topics for you, and they are hard topics. I ain't going to lie to you. All these right. ain't volleyballs. These, okay. these ain't softballs that I'm throwing you. These ain't softballs I'm throwing you, and I know how you get when you get in your bag. I know this. <laughs> this, this stuff ain't personal. You know it ain't personal. Yeah, but I know how you get. I know how you get because you don't be up for these emotional arguments and all of that stuff. I know how it is. But before we get to that, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Doing well, man. Still growing financially, spiritually. Man, everything's doing good for me right now, even in the midst of a pandemic, bro. How about yourself? Damn, I'm all right. I'm all, I'm all, yes, I'm all right. Right? So, so here's the thing. I want to get down to the nitty-gritty with you, right? We want to get down to the nitty-gritty. We want to say thank you to those that are watching Nick's Versus. This is the first time we've been on in a while. We're trying our best to put out a, a quality product for, for the y'all that are watching. So, so if you're watching this and then you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, right? Hit that button. Sm smash that like button. Show some support for Nick's fans doing Nick's content in a very Nick's way. Right now that all of that is out of the way, I have something that, that I want to I want to um, lob your way. Or throw your way. What you got? Right? Throw your way, right? Because this is a question that Nick's content creators have been dodging, and I want to get your get your feedback on it. Here's the thing, you know, we all love the Knicks, and we felt like we had a good season, a good season last year, right? Yep. Absolutely. But but last year it seemed like we wasn't ourselves in the playoffs, right? And I think part of that had to do with the crowd, right? But let me ask you this. Will the crowd have a impact on the team this season? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to answer that with a resounding yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to answer that with a resounding yes. I'm going to explain to you why. Last year, let's be honest, when the crowd was let back in, whether it was home or away, in the playoffs, it affected our team. Reason being, with the way the roster was constructed, we had talented players, don't get me wrong, but they were all miscast to an extent, to a small degree. And not that they can't fit the roles they were in, but I don't know if they were quite ready to fit those roles. Because when, when you're Julius Randle and you're the number one option, you're the go-to guy on the New York Knicks, and you got 30,000 people in Atlanta screaming at you, and it's no different at home when you ain't playing well, psychologically that can affect you. You know what I'm saying? When you young RJ Barrett, you 20 years old and you struggling out here, you know, in the playoffs and you in front of this big crowd, you know, it kind of affects you a little bit. But this year we got the residual pieces around them and those common voices, dudes that have been in battles, Kemba Walker, dudes that have been in front of large crowds and even had some success in the playoffs, Evan Fournier. So we had those dudes that can whisper in your ear and bring you back down. You know, we had Taj Gibson last year, but it was only one Taj. So this year, I think it's going to impact us, but the crowd's going to impact us in a positive manner because now these dudes have had a taste of the playoffs. They know what it's like when you don't succeed in the playoffs, and they probably rather die than feel that way again. So they're going to use the crowd to feed themselves, whether it's the away crowd or the home crowd. So I expect these dudes to show out in the playoffs. So what I gather from that is we were soft last year. Mentally, they were weak in the playoffs. So what lie. I gather from that is mentally we were weak and soft last year in the playoffs. In the playoffs. In the playoffs, yes. Regular season, no. In the playoffs, yes. Because, I mean, like, if you put yourself in that position, where you were – and let's be honest, the Knicks won the position of a top dog. We had home court in the playoffs. We didn't squeak by in the seventh seeds, the tenth seed, go through the play-in. The Knicks, we whooped on teams all year long. 
whooped on teams, embarrassed them, holding them to 95 points. You know what I'm saying? Holding them to 30 percent shooting from the field. We whooped on some teams last year. So now you can't be mentally weak, man. You got to wear the target. You got to wear it proudly because not only are you wearing a Knicks jersey, but you're wearing a jersey of a team that's been putting people, you know, in the ground, you know, for 70, 72 games last year, but 82 games. So we're going to have the biggest target on our backs in the NBA this season, even more so in Milwaukee. Everybody want a piece of the Knicks right now. Mm. What will RJ Barrett's role be this season? This season. His role is going to be exactly what the Knicks are missing this season. Ain't got nothing to do with points. Ain't got nothing to do with rebounds or assists. We need that pit bull, that dog, that's going to say, who is your number one option? Show me your number one option. I'm going to erase him. I'm going to erase him, and I'm going to drop 20 on him. That would be like none other than Meta, Sandiford, or Test. We're on our test. Metal World. Oh, Peace. no, he didn't, ladies and That's the gentlemen. role. That's the role we're going to see. He may not lead the team in scoring. He may not lead the team in rebounds or assists. But they're going to look at the Knicks and say, that's their guy. That dude wearing number nine, that young dude right there, that's their guy. That dude to say, you know what? I got Tobias Harris. And hold him to three for 17 and drop 20 points. They're going to say, that's their guy. That's going to be his test, role this season. Kawhi Leonard role. Run our test Kawhi in the role. Oh, he's, 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 he's ready for it. He's ready for it. Are you Woodshed? Are you sick? Are you you know yep. you are going for Knicks fans jugular and heart yep. at the same time? Yep. That's gonna be his you, role, man. Because you know Ron Artest is a beloved native New Yorker. Queensbridge, Queensbridge finest, man. So St. RJ John's. Barrett. Oh, yeah. RJ Barrett in, in, in a Ron Artest type role. For a championship contending Knicks team. That's going to be his role, man, because if you look at the way the paces were constructed, yeah, Jermaine O'Neal was leading the team in scoring. Steven Jackson was right there, but it was no question who the dog was on that team, who the leader was on that team. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And our test, this wasn't 10 years in the league. This was 24 years old, four or five years in the league, defensive player of the year. Okay. No, that's 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 what he was doing. So that's what I'm expecting for RJ. I'm expecting for him to supplant himself as a one of the top 30 teams in the league, players in the league. I'm sorry, and also one of the top 25 Ooh. defenders in the league this season. Wait, this, this, season. Season. This, season. this season. This season. This season. This season. This season. You may his, see his points fluctuate. He may fluctuate to 18, 19 points a game. But that defense, that defense is going to be. People are gonna be talking about RJ's defense all over the NBA. All right, and, and so all over the NBA. To, to support your point, um, I, uh, to, to support your point, NBA.com had RJ Barrett ranked and and as fifth in defensive win shares among forwards. See, last year. See, Julius Randle was third. RJ Barrett was fifth. Reggie Bullock was 18th. Right? But if you if if you talk to a casual, they gonna they will tell you Reggie Bullock was the best perimeter defender on the team. Right. Okay. No I never saw I never saw it that way. Bullock was a was a was a good defender and he was good as far as exerting all his energy onto that number one option. Right. Because unlike unlike RJ, we didn't require Reggie to score 20. Right. We needed right. we needed every bucket RJ made. So right. this very season here, he's gonna step up into that run our test role. The Ron numbers may be. He's gonna step into the not meta, not not the meta in LA, run our test. That dude where they come into the guard and they looking across and like, damn, I gotta deal with RJ Barrett tonight. Indiana run our test. Indiana our test. Malice in the Palace our test. Oh that's, that, that, that's that's what we're gonna see from RJ. You're gonna see T. You remember LeBron was in the finals and Kawhi come at LeBron said, damn, that's what you're gonna see. All season with RJ. That's what you're gonna see, man. K Cunningham, you got a problem on your hands. Okay. Okay. LeBron, got you got a problem on your hands too. Zach Levine, you sure enough got a problem on your hands. He's okay. gonna be there to race it for us. If RJ becomes that, then let me ask you this: Where are the Knicks gonna be in the hierarchy of the NBA? If he becomes that, the Knicks will be a top three team in the Eastern Conference. What? Top three team in the East. 
What? Yep, top three team in the East. If he becomes that top three team in the East. Okay. Okay. And you're saying that based on Julius Randle having uh, – being more efficient now that he's not going to be double teamed as much. Correct. With the additions of, of Fournier, Kimball Walker, with the additions of the rookies back filling the roster, with, with the with the second year in Tibbs' um, offense and defensive schemes, in an 82-game schedule, and, and with the t- the Knicks being one of the – having one of the deepest teams in franchise history. And, and, and I know part. that's – that's that a lot last to part. Say. That's a lot to say, but that last part. Listen, last year, who had a better bench in the NBA than the Knicks? Mm. Who? Nobody. I, I, I like, don't like, 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 like. Let's be honest. We got a top. Like, we got two two guys on the bench right now, in Rose and quickly. They could probably start at point guard for a handful of teams. Right. Start. Start. Start at point guard. Okay. For a handful of teams. We got we got Kimber Walker, the Bronx bully, back in New York City. That's just starting point guard. So if you look at the bench, Alec Burks, Manuel Quickly, Derek Rose, either gonna have Nerlens or Mitch coming off the bench. I mean Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your, your draft picks. You got your pick, you got all your picks, and these are kids that that have skill sets that translate right away. Neither one of these kids is the project. You know what right. I'm saying? Neither one is a project. They all do something well enough to help this team right now, and they're not going to be forced to get out there and lead the franchise. So if I'm going to be honest with you, when RJ makes his maturation this year to that run our test role, that dude that everybody got a problem with, that they know they're going to have a problem with, when he matures into that, I'm telling you, the Knicks are going to be a top three team in the East. Because I not only – I have a feeling you're 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 saying that RJ Barrett is become is gonna become Gotham's Dark Knight. He's gonna be the Dark Knight. Ah! He's gonna be the Batman. You know, he's gonna be the Batman of the franchise. And the thing about it is we already got one of the best benches in the NBA. When he makes this leap, we're gonna have one of the best starting lineups in the NBA. Point blank, period. And if we get anything plus from Mitchell Robinson, we're gonna make the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay. We're gonna okay. be in the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay. Because, so if you if you if to answer the question, let me get back to the question. The hierarchy of the NBA, the Knicks are right now, if I'm being honest, without orange and blue glasses, we are definitely um a top half franchise in the NBA right now. Okay. I think that we've reached a point where we're stable enough to where something drastic will have to happen for us not to make the playoffs. And my playoffs, I'm not talking about making a play in the seven, ten C. I'm talking about that in them top six seeds. Something drastic had to happen for us not to be in those top six seeds for the foreseeable future. Because if you look at our top players, Randall entering his prime, RJ, not even in his prime yet. You got Kimber Walker, still can give you some good basketball. Evan Fournier, still in his prime. You got a good bench. You got Mitch Robinson, ain't even in his prime yet. You got a, a bench where you got Derrick Rose. You can get buckets on anybody on the planet. Like, we got people's favorite player on the bench. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got Emmanuel quickly soaking it up from Tom Thibodeau. Alec Burks, a dude that's going to, he going to, again, can score on anybody in the league. So, if you look at the hierarchy of the NBA, the Eastern Conference, the Knicks are, and, and, and the Hawks to a lesser degree, because, you know, Atlanta don't like to spend money, are going up. It's only one way to go from here because all our players are under contract. All of them are either entering their prime or in their prime, and we're going up. The Nets are going down. The only team that that was ahead of us in the standings in the Eastern Conference last year that I can't say is is on a downward spiral or downward swing is is the Bucs. Right. I mean, that's it. The current NBA champs. The champions. So, 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 So to answer the question, I think we're right there in the thick of it with everybody in the Eastern Conference. We don't know what Philly going to look like. No. We don't because know what they're going to look like. Because it's Philadelphia, bro. It's Philadelphia. They, no, we, they, we don't know what they're going to look like. Right. Because it's Philly. Historically, they are who they are right now. A bunch a bunch of talent. A bunch of talent. They always have a bunch of talent. And they find a way to not go anywhere. And that's why that's, I wanted that's so that's badly to win that first round. Because if the talent is comparable... Tibbs is going to beat Doc. Right. 
Uh, un unless the talent is just very lopsided, he gonna beat Doc. We know Doc right. is. If you get Doc to a game seven, it's over. It's over. It's over. Especially so, in the second round. Especially in the, in the second, second round, round. It's over. It's over. Yeah. So I mean, if, if you look at this team, and I give Leon Rose credit, the questions that we had just at the start of his tenure, not even two years ago, most of them answered. You know what I'm saying? We don't have a star. Okay, we got we got one star that's established. We got another star that's gonna come into his stardom this year in RJ right. Barrett. Right. We got the right auxiliary pieces around them, dudes that have been in the playoff, been in the wars, been in the battles, made all-star teams. You know what I'm saying? They can get buckets and mentor. Then we have, do we have a point guard of the future? I think Miles McBride can be that. Because oh. if, you, if, if if Tom Thibodeau went to the point guard store, the player he brought back would look like Miles McBride. Right, right. He would right. look like Miles McBride. You know what I'm saying? No so no we got a kid on the bench that's an Alfred Payton that can score and shoot. Wow. So, and shoot. And so is the, willing to do something. And is and willing, willing to shoot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, willing to shoot. So the questions that, that we have, a lot of them have been answered, but the key to this season is R.J. Barrett stepping up, stepping into that role, and becoming the unquestioned dog in the middle of that lineup, right there at that three spot. Just like the when you have night. the dog night, man. The dog night, just like you had Kawhi Leonard, just like you had Ron Artest. Well, these dudes, when they play against the Knicks, they're going to know, hey, damn, I got to deal with this dude tonight. I don't know what all I'm gonna four, do, man. All four quarters. All, all four quarters. Minutes. He gonna he gonna be in my shorts. All four quarters. <laughs> right. You know what right. I'm saying? It's a problem, and I think that he can do it. I think he will do it, and I think he has the um, the personality to want to be a killer. You know what I'm saying? A lot of players don't have that. This dude has a personality that he wants to be a killer. Unfazed. He wants to be a killer. If you if, if you remember that game when we played Milwaukee. Because Middleton didn't want no smoke with RJ. Yeah. He didn't want yeah. no smoke. Same thing with Philly. Ben Simmons didn't want no smoke with RJ. Neither did Tobias. I'm telling you, right. it's going to happen this year. Go watch okay. them run our test highlights from the defensive player of the 0304. That's what you're going to see from RJ. Ben. All right. Well, we'll well, we'll wrap right there. That was rapid fire. AM, ladies and gentlemen. That's Nick versus. That's how we do it here. We get some narratives that will float down in, in the Knicks universe and, and, and bring them to Woodshed and let Woodshed do his business. So Good if you job, look right Wood. here, if you look right here, that's the app. Leave the comments. You can find me on social media right here. That's the app. Let's debate. I ain't going to argue with you, but we can debate. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, hey so thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Woodshed. You know what I'm saying? For 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 taking these 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 um I thought they were gonna be fastballs. I guess they wound up being softballs to you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Um thank you for taking these these weird Knicks narratives and addressing them. This is Knicks versus everybody. Um subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. Um tune in for, for more Knicks versus. We'll continue to to put these Knicks versus um out here on, on Blorence Tears. Um thanks again, everybody. Peace.